Start. Greetings, Toastmasters, distinguished Toastmasters, Gabiliers, and all the guests. We welcome you all to this joint meeting of five clubs. This is the 45th club of Eloquent Elites Club, which is an online club. The 84th meeting of St. Paul Toastmasters Club from Bahrain. 142nd Indian Academy Toastmasters Club of Bahrain. The 320th meeting of Awesome and Innovative Minds Toastmasters Club of Bahrain. And the 27th meeting of St. Paul Gavels Club of Bahrain. This is Distinguished Toastmaster Rinosh Kurian Thomas, the Serdited Arms for today's hybrid joint meeting. I am sure you are all eager and excited to start this beautiful journey that we are all in today. And let us see what we have in store in today's meeting. Before we begin the meeting, let me share a few ground rules that's applicable for such meetings. For those in the online, kindly make sure that your device, either laptop or phones, are well charged and you have stable internet connection. For those offline, please turn off your mobile phones or put them on silent mode. Online participants are kindly requested to switch on your video or camera, but please put your mics on mute if you're not speaking. And all the online role players are kindly requested to log in with your role, followed by your name in order for the host and co-host to recognize you. Request all online participants to switch off your video if you're stepping out of the meeting and to use the chat function to provide feedback to the speakers directly to encourage them. If you are an online speaker, please ensure you pin the timer or confirm that the timer is visible to you. Please refrain from talking on topics related to sex, religion, and politics. As everybody in their life has a mission to achieve their goals, likewise, our club also has a mission. The mission of a club is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Born and brought up in Bahrain, residing in Germany, strongly believes that Arsenal is life. He is the AV champion at humorous contests several times. His main hobbies are annoying his mother, now wife, and watching the series. With a round of applause, please welcome the presiding officer of today's hybrid joint meeting, Toastmaster Blessin Thomas Matthew. Over to you. Thank you so much, TTM Renosh. Uh, I think there was a slight correction there. It is annoying mom and now wife also. I don't think that word also came. I'm, that must have been a typing mistake and that just sounded wrong. But anyway, let me call the meeting to order all the meetings that you had mentioned. Let me call all of them to order. I don't have a gavel right now, so I'm just going to use my hand. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, uh, could I get the VCEs to tell me if there is any correction in the agenda? No, uh, all the corrections have been just made and then added. So the timers roll, the uh, speaker, the speech evaluator, they changed at the last minute and the corrections are added in the agenda. So with that, the agenda can be adopted as it is. Okay, perfect. So could I have any members to adopt the agenda and second it also? Yes. Yeah, uh, I propose. President Girish Mittal from Eloquent Elites Toastmasters is proposed that the agenda be accepted. And anyone to second it? Anyone? No tension here. There's no this thing. Just anyone just. Yeah, yeah, I second it. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> okay, now that that's out of the way, let me get into my welcome address. So I have a best friend who is an architect. When I say he's my best friend, 
it means that we both bash each other all the time about what we work in and we we downplay the other person but he's an architect and i'm just jobless right now so technically he's got one point ahead of me right now so he told me the story about an assignment they were given when they were studying and uh, the funny thing about that is they were given a pencil this size just one pencil uh, i hope you can see it it's just a normal ikea pencil and they were given one in the starting and they were it was placed in between two tables and they were asked to step on it so naturally what happens the pencil breaks or it falls out of place either one but then they were given a whole lot of them like as many as they wanted and they were told to build a, a bridge or a connection or, or like a, a platform and then the next step that they had to do was they had to stand on top of it so the whole idea was it had to take their weight and the funny thing is it always took their weight which is exactly what unity is when one person alone stands it might not be that effective but when multiple people stand for the same cause it's definitely going to hold and that is exactly what our director ravi smedley did for us in 1924 when he organized this first meeting of toastmasters and now we have let's see 280000 members plus in i think 14700 plus uh, clubs across 144 countries so ralph seesmanly did his part and now i think it's time for us to do our part and before i get into that my next part which is introducing the tier monies i have one question do we have any guests here the our, our general evaluator dtm dr brilliant sk if you could just introduce yourself because i'm pretty sure the rest of you don't know hello can you hear me yeah i'm here you now hi my name is brilliant i belong to bombay tools masters club an in person and a hybrid club right now and a virtual club all elite advanced tools masters i've been a part of tools masters for about 15 years now back to you please thank you so much and uh, next mr kunjaram shravani uh, attending first time she is a member of our club eloquently okay. stores passage she was not her amazing. family many members were not keeping well thank you for recognizing her yes okay thank you so much uh, my bad thank you thank you ma'am so now my next part of what i'm supposed to be doing is i'm going to be introducing an individual who is a business analyst uh, analyst in an it company my bad she is from calcutta and moved to dehradun she has been in mumbai since the last 5 years and likes to travel who doesn't she joined toastmasters to hone her listening and speaking skills and also network she is a one month baby in toastmasters ladies and gentlemen Don't put your hands yet together for Toastmaster Sri Parna Basu. Before you can put your hands together, please also welcome another dear Modi Toastmaster Regina Ismail, who is working as a teacher. She is from Kerala, an MCom student of Indian Academy, and joined Toastmasters in 2020 to improve her public speaking skills. Her hobbies are reading and cooking. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for both our dear modis, which are Toastmaster Sri Parna Basi Basu and Toastmaster Regina Ismail. Uh, Toastmaster Sri Parna. You can have to start. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, so, dear Toastmasters, the valiers and guests. So, I, Sri Parna Basu, am the online Toastmaster of the day, and I'm very well happy to welcome you all to this meeting. The theme of the day is unity is strength. Does it look like an oft-repeated cliche to you? better let us not underrate it every pandemic whether be it polio or covid has taught us 
no one is safe until everyone is safe so we have to break all human made barriers race caste economic divide political ideologies and stand together friends families teams hobby groups organizations nations big or small we have to be together and be there for one another as a first step to build the momentum i request distinguished toastmaster dr brilliant district 98 leadership committee chair to share his observations on how toastmasters builds unity thank you toastmaster of the day shri parna good morning good afternoon good evening from whichever part of the world you have joined us welcome to this interesting joint meet five clubs hybrid that's something for the first time i'm attending and in the matter of a uh, privilege to be a part of this meeting as a general evaluator given my experience in the last 15 odd years i'm very happy to share that what we talk about unity what we talk about diversity and how we come together to help each other be it at club meetings when sajin at arms renosh spoke about the mission it talks about supporting each other building a culture which is positive helping each other become better there was nothing but the pandemic which actually showcased how the world came back stronger as one toastmasters fraternity to support each others in the journey to become better as speaker and better as a leader and my dear friends i remember way back just before the pandemic set in we had said goodbyes to our friends at the regional uh, meeting and we were all excited thinking about what next and then suddenly came a shocker we did not know what to do thankfully as they say the someone who's already walked the path ahead of you and that's where the beauty and, and the unit was came in region 14 had the pandemic onset onto them much earlier than region 13 that is the indian subcontinent and we were not not clear about how do we do it no clue about what's next we reached out to region 14 they helped us get into a virtual mode of contest which was unheard of we had the taped contest but we never had a virtual contest everything was completely blank and we had a new canvas on which we had to paint a beautiful picture that's when uh, now international director gauri sheshadri a then region advisor for region 14 she helped me we worked together and we helped not just each other but also shared best practices lessons and challenges thereby helping each other become better at what we do i believe had it not been for this community of those masters who believed in the concept of unity to help build and strengthen the purpose of those masters to be better communicators better leaders we would have not seen what we are seeing here today a hybrid meeting with people from almost all around the world i see girija from the united states we have the president from germany we have someone from mumbai someone in bahrain hats off and this is what will keep us going and we will make sure that what dr ralph c smedley dreamt of learning when we have fun continues despite all the challenges thanks for giving me this opportunity back to you toastmaster of the day thank you distinguished toastmaster dr brilliant those are really beautiful words and very inspiring friends unity is the foundation of any growth when spiders unite they can tie down a lion and a school of fishes can scare away a shark 2 million jabs of covid vaccination has built mass immunity united we could defeat a deadly pandemic sergeant at arms distinguished toastmaster renosh thomas can you name one big hurdle to unity and one suggestion on how to overcome that thank you toastmaster day i think the one word that comes to me is short sightedness i think as the as the world as a whole 
we have to understand each of us are unique and different in our own aspects. And there need to be inclusive workplaces, inclusiveness in all areas. And that's where I believe Toastmasters is one embodiment that shows that culture of having all of us together. And I think if that short-sightedness can be ticked off, removed from our dictionary, this unity will be even much more strong. Over to you, Toastmaster Bhadi. Thank you, DTM Ranosh. That's, that's really true. Very powerful word. And uh, now we move on to our first section, introduction of role players. Every building stands up because of its strong beams. Meeting role players keep the meeting structure intact and help us achieve the communication enhancement objectives of Toastmasters. I invite distinguished Toastmaster Dr. Brillian to explain the role of a general evaluator, which he has graciously accepted today. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Shri Parna. My role as general evaluator is to generally evaluate the general things that happened generally during the meeting today. I have a gatekeeper team to help me. And you must be wondering, what is this gatekeeper team? The gatekeeper team comprises of G, the gen, uh, grammarian, A, the R counter, T, the timer, and E, the evaluators. So with the help of my wonderful team, we will make sure that we provide feedback and inputs for helping people become better as communicators and leaders. Thank you so much. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Dr. Brilliant. Uh, now I invite Grammarian Toastmaster Girija Deshpande to explain her role. Thank you, Toastmaster Aparna. What roots are to a tree is what grammar is to a language. The contribution of the roots is not seen, but without the roots, the tree cannot survive. Similarly, grammar gives structure, understanding, and a foundation to the language. Without that, the language will fall flat. So today, the word of the day is solidarity. Solidarity is an uncountable noun and it is an abstract noun. So it describes a quality. The meaning of the word solidarity goes with the theme of the day. It means unity or agreement of feeling or action, especially among individuals with a common interest, like we are in Toastmasters or Rotary or even small teams, family, we have our own go common goals. So the mutual support within a group that is called as solidarity. Example of a sentence would be, we have good solidarity in our team, though our team members are from different countries and follow different faiths. The verb is solidify, adjective is solidary, and adverb is solidarily. The word solidarity, comes from the French solidaire, which means study and firm. And the word in French solidaire harks back to the Latin solidium, which means whole and undivided. As a grammarian today, I will uh, request everybody to use the word of the day as many times as possible, solidarity, so that it becomes a part of your vocabulary. I will keep account of whoever used the words and I will recount it when I'm called for at the end. I will also make down, take down the usages of uh, very good usages, metaphors, languages, phrases, uh, all those uh, beautiful usages that draw attention to a person's presentation. Areas of improvement on also any pronunciation deviations also will be noted down and will be recounted when I'm called upon to present my report. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Girija. Uh, uh, the word of the day is solidarity. And as Girija said, uh, I request everyone who speaks here to use this word at least once in your speech. Toastmaster Girija, today, anyone who betrays one's own team and cunningly supports the enemy camp is called the modern Mir Jafar. What is the one character that flaw that you think made him betray his own country to the British? It is um, it is said that Mir Jafar was offered the bribe that he will be made the Nawab of Bengal. So it is the desire for power, the greed for power, the greed for money that made him 
do that, right? So with power comes authority, with power comes influence, with power comes money. That is why he wanted it. So he just did not bother about all the people with whom he lived for so many years, just for the sake of that greed for power. So greed is that one quality that can break away the unity or solidarity of any group. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Girija. That is so true. Uh, next comes the role of the R counter. I invite DTM Renosh Thomas to explain the role. Thank you, Tosmasar Day. Greetings to everyone. The purpose of the R counter is to note words and sounds that are used as crutch or a pause filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, and you know, and so forth. I will also listen for filler sounds, including a, um, er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used these expressions. As we voice our solidarity in today's meeting, let us try to be cautious to avoid any filler words or crutch words. Over to you, Tosma Sarade. Thank you, DTM Ranosh. Uh, now I would like to invite Timer Manasvi to explain the timing guidelines and demonstrate timer cards for prepared speeches. I request online timer DTM Ranosh to demonstrate the virtual timer cards at the same time. Thank you, Toastmaster Dr. Day. And greetings to all my fellow Toastmasters. And yes, Mr. Yeah. Greetings to all my fellow Toastmasters. As time up, I will be timed. I, I will time the table topic speaker, formal speeches, icebreaker speeches, and the evaluation. I will also alert each speaker of the time they have left using the green, yellow, and red card, which limit a specific time remaining. For icebreaker speech, the length of the speech should be four to six minutes. At four minutes, I will be showing the green card. At five minutes, I will be showing the yellow card. And at six minutes, I will be showing the red card. After that, you get 30 seconds as a gray sign. For prepared speeches, the uh, length of the speech should be five to seven minutes. At five minutes, I will be showing the green card. At uh, six minutes, I will be showing the yellow card. And at seven minutes, I will be showing the red card. And again, you will get a 30 second of the as a grace time. For table topics, the length of the speech should be <clears throat> uh, more, not more than two minutes. It should be one to two minutes. At one minute, I will be showing the red card. At one minute and 30 seconds, it will be a yellow card. And at two minutes, it will be a red card. For evaluation, for individual evaluation, the time will be two to three minutes. At two minutes, there will be a green card. At uh, two and a half minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds, there will be a yellow card. At three minutes, there will be a red, red card. I hope uh, all the time uh, is clear to everyone and we look forward to a great session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Manasvi and DTM Ranosh. Uh, Toastmaster Manasvi, uh, can you name and describe concisely one value that helps unity among team members? The one value that uh, like uh, help create a unity among team members is the harmony uh, and the gratitude in between the team. Okay, uh, like uh, the sharing is the main part of a team, and it increases the unity as well. The more we share our knowledge, the more we share our wisdom, the more we share our uh, uh, roadblocks will help the team to grow much faster and create the more stronger unity. I remember one example of that, like uh, even the act of a donating of blood, it, it is the act of a solidarity. And uh, uh, thankfully, I can say that I practice it a lot. And I hope that everyone will be practicing it in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Manasvi. Now we move on to the prepared speeches for the day. We have seen even the toughest of wars are won with united, intelligent efforts. We all know how soldiers hidden in the Trojan horse came out and destroyed Troy. 
In 1971, the Indo-Pak War at Longewala, 2,000 Pakistani soldiers and 40 tanks attacked 120 Indian troops. Indian troops followed the strategy given by Commander Major Kuldeep Singh, trusted his wisdom, put up minefield markers in areas where there were in fact no mines. The Pakistani forces could not advance and then eventually retreated once the Indian troops arrived. The Pakistani forces lost 200 troops in total compared to the Indian losses of just two men and five camels. Moving on, Toastmaster Anand Soni has chosen the path leadership development and he is presenting his icebreaker today. Distinguished Toastmaster Raja Manikam is the speech evaluator. DTM Raja, can you share the name of one national leader who you think has kept his or her country united in tough times? And what is that one leadership trait that fostered national solidarity? Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Dari. And uh, yes, to go today's uh, unity strength, as per uh, simple we can say, as our Mahatma Gandhi. He did a massive uh, movement. Of course, this is uh, only Satyagraha. Its entire nation is under one mission that is patience and the perseverance and uh, our uh, Satyagraha movement. So, for this, it's an example for everyone to show our unity. Strength among our Toastmasters. And back to you, Toastmaster. That was brilliant, DTM Raja. Uh, I now request you to share the speech objectives for the audiences. Thank you. Our Toastmaster member today is our speaker, Toastmaster Anand Soni. I'm evaluating for this speech. Speech length is timer, please note five to seven minutes. I do some minutes. But uh, this evaluation from the introduction to post post command and then we size breakers. Okay, today our uh, speaker is delivering the icebreaker speech. The purpose of this project is for the member to introduce themselves to the club and learn the basic structure of the public speech. So for this, I could like to congratulate our speaker. Back to you, team. Thank you, DTM Raja, and announcing the first speech, TM uh, Anand Soni, on self-motivation. All the best. Once again, good evening to all of you. Distinguished all the Toastmaster, Toastmaster of the day. Today, my topic is self-motivation. But before to motivate self, let me first introduce myself. Myself is Anand Soni. Working here with Ministry of Education, Higher Education, as a senior lecturer, I am teaching beautiful subject of human resource and related with other county. You cannot confuse that one is completely with full of emotion and another one is without emotion. It links to my first plan. I belong to India, near to one international border. There. At the same time, we have to be emotional that we need to protect our borders. We are weak, borderline people called as the second defense line of the country. And second thing, we need to fulfill our family responsibilities. In this small town of Punjab city, Abaha, I started my life. I born in a small family. My father was company commanding officer. I saw him in the uniform. So from the day one, I had that curl that I should bring some solidity in my thoughts so I can also fulfill his dream by having the uniform. On the other hand, my mother, she was always saying me that should not limit yourself just to the uniform. You need to serve the society, and there are several ways. Just there should be the solidity in your thoughts. How you achieve your aim? I graduated from one school. 
And in the school, I saw one teacher who was also motivating me that how can I achieve my goals in my life? With the help of my teacher, always teacher play a beautiful role in your life. This I realized when I was a student, when teacher comes to me and try to complete my path towards my aim and objectives. The same thing I'm trying to do when I'm as a teacher, I'm as an educator. I went to college. Still, the same aim was going in my mind. I have to get the uniform. I joined NCC. NCC stand for National Cadet Corps. I was a senior and officer in that. Shooting was my lovely hobby. Based on that, I reached up to RD, Republic Day Parade. Later on, I got selected even for Indian Air Force. But due to some technical things, I was not able to join. But again, the point comes. I need to motivate myself, self-motivation. I cannot say that one failure can stop me to reach my goal. Because one hurdle, one stop will not stop you in your journey. I recalled my mother's statement with my dear, if one window closes, the another door will open for you. Don't stop yourself at one point. I was happy. To refresh my mood, I entered one school. As a teacher, I started my career with a small kids, kids of seventh class and eighth class. From there, my journey, my interest, it started in the teaching. Later on, I entered to the several stages of teaching. I worked with the Center of Electronics and Technology Design of India. I worked with the different colleges at UC level, at PZ level, at vocational study level. I talked to the variety of students in India. Apart from that, in 2004, I got the opportunity even to work with the industrial. Sometime I worked there. Later on, I shifted to Bahrain. I got selected by the Ministry of Education here. I'm too proud on my profession. And this is the result of solidarity in my thoughts that still I'm feeling the happiness that I'm following my mother's. Beautiful line. My dear, one door close, the other will open. So always, whenever I see some students in the difficult situation, I'm saying that motivate yourself because if one door will close, one window will close, number of other doors and windows will open for you. Nothing can stop you until unless there is solidity in your thought. And when there is solidity in your emotion, in your fabric, and my big salute to Sadar Balabhai Patel, who brings the solidarity in India by joining almost 450 states under one flag. With these words, I will say that always believe in solidarity, not in any kind of differently. And even as an Indian, I am proud to say that we believe in Vasudev Kutumkam, means the whole world is my family. So whole world, I believe that with the solidarity in the form of emotions and thoughts. Thank you very much, everyone here. Thank you. Thank you for your speech, Toastmaster Anand Soni. Toastmaster Akash Khokar is presenting Project 2 of Level 1 from the path Innovative Planning. <clears throat> the speech evaluator is Toastmaster Vikram Joshi from Timber Toastmasters. Vikram Joshi, can you please share your views on how strong united families build a strong nation? Thank you, T.O. Modi. Uh, good evening, distinguished Toastmasters, guests, and a special good, good evening to my target speaker, Mr. Akash Kokar. Unity. They say charity begins at home. I believe in that. For a nation to be united, the unity should start from the family. When the family is united, the area is united. When the area of 
is united, a society is united. When a society is united, then a nation is united. This is what I believe in. I hope I answered your uh, question, Toastmaster of the day, Sri Parnabasu. Now I'll move on to my speech objectives for the target speaker, Mr. Toastmaster Akash Kokar. Mr. Akash Kokar is attempting his level one project two, writing with a purpose. The purpose statement for his speech is, the project is for the member to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. It is for the member to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege. The speech title for the target speaker, Mr. Akash Kukar, is Making and Breaking Habits. Timer, please make note of the time, five to seven minutes. And over to my target speaker, Toastmaster Akash Kukar. Good evening. Thank you, uh, uh, fellow Toastmasters. I'm glad I'm standing in front of you with another topic. And thank you for this opportunity. So uh, today's topic and uh, the title of my topic is Making and Breaking Habits. And I believe the topic itself is very much self-explanatory, but I'm going to talk about. It's as simple as that, how to make habits and how to break habits. And the reason behind I chose this topic was if you know if some uh, someone, uh, many of you must know that I recently moved to Bahrain. So when it's kind of a new journey, okay, I've moved to a new country, new starting, so I'll leave some bad habits behind, I'll start, I will pick up some good, good habits. So initially my thought process was, okay, I will wake up in the morning by five o'clock, hit the gym and come back, go to the office, have my breakfast, keep my calories under control, all those things, all those things. So while doing that, it was a problem that I was facing that I was not able to sustain that habit for a long term, for one week, two weeks, when I was highly motivated for one month, I was, but not for, not for a prolonged period. Yeah. So I went into some uh, technical aspects of this making and breaking habits. I read some literature, went to the library, started listening to the, in meanwhile, I picked one habit that still is with me, that is listening to podcasts. In all the things, I, when I was focusing, okay, what's the technical aspect? As an engineer, we always go a bit technical. So today's topic is also going to be a bit technical. So before starting, well, let me, uh, let me get my thoughts. Okay. First question for my audience. What do you think is a habit? Anyone? From online audience or people in front of me? Anyone? Okay, that's one point. Anyone else who would like to add something? Okay, moving forward. So, as my fellow partner said, the action that we do regularly. Yeah, we can say that. And that's pretty much the definition of habit. Technically speaking, habits are those reflexes or a set of activities that an individual perform without too much training himself or going into a mindset, okay, I have to do that. That is simply the definition of habit. How do you measure habit? How do you quantify a habit? Like, okay, this is a strong habit. This, it's, this is not a strong habit. Uh, for example, let's say someone wakes up in the morning, I need my morning coffee, I need my espresso uh, shot. I need a cup of tea or morning newspaper, whatever. Without that, I can't start a day. These are also habits. Sleeping on one side of the bed, that is also a habit. Tapping your legs while sitting, that's also a habit. So how do you quantify? For quantifying habits, there are scientifically, there are uh, two things. Uh, I will explain them. Uh, first, let me know. Context dependency. And second is limbic friction. I repeat myself. Context dependency and limbic friction. What are these? Limbic friction. Let me start from the back only. Limbic friction is a biological term which says that it is the amount of what we say mindset, or it's a, take it as a barrier. It's like a barrier that you one need to overcome to go, to go into a mindset of doing one activity. So, lower, higher your, uh, sorry, higher your limbic friction is. The more is the, uh, your chances to fail to perform activity or your habit. Second term that I coined was context dependency. It means, let's just say, for example, when you start your morning, you need your coffee. If you are at your home, okay, you can't start your day without coffee. But let's say you are traveling, you are at a hotel or you are at some relatives. Can you still start, can't start your day without coffee? If you can, so 
context is changed. You are not at your home. You are at some place, some place else. So now that habit is not that strong. Okay, I'm not at home. I don't need to go. Then I will get the phone and take the So context dependency is another factor that consider that comes in when you are quantifying the habits. So when these two factors align, then then we can measure habit. Context dependence is uh, any habit that is independent of context dependency, or we, we should uh, any habit that is context independent, and your limbic friction is low. That means you need a very low motivation or very like simple mindset. Okay, now I have to hit the regime. It's five o'clock already. These are equal uh, inversely proportional. In, uh, limbic friction is inversely proportional, and context dependency is directly proportional to how a proper habit is. Now coming to let, uh, I have a time constraint, so let me just uh, touch it up. So tool one, uh, as uh, making and making habits. Sorry, okay. Yeah, making habits and breaking habits. Tool one for making habits. The first thing is we got procedural memory. Procedural memory is anything like we have two type of memories: episodic and procedural. Procedural uh, episodic memories are both memories that. Okay, something happened. You remember that it was like that. Procedural memory is the particular set in the particular set of action in which that activity takes place. That is procedural memory. So once you are trying to get a get into a habit, you should perform procedural memory. You should make a procedure. So let's just say, let me. I'm, I believe I am too much going back to coffee. So in the morning you need coffee. So in your mind, just visualize the process for each and every step of making walking. I will be getting up from my bed, going to, going to kitchen, going for my cup, making, uh, getting my water, all those things. So put all those steps in the. You just visualize all those process. Uh, visualize all those activities so that you you have a procedure in your brain. Second tool will be, uh, face this habit. In the morning, your dopamine levels are high. In the afternoon, dopamine level a bit low. And your while the evening, uh, my brain is work, working like that. Then when the sun sets, you are going into crystal level, so that your dopamine level is low, and you are going to bed. So whatever habit you are doing, let's just say you are going to gym. So your high chances of hitting a gym are in the morning rather than the evening because you are coming back from office or school or whatever. So your mind is a bit strained. So you won't be able to perform that activity. So choose a habit. Uh, and also time your phase phase of the day in which you have to perform that activity, so it will be helpful. The third one that will be bracketing the task. Whatever the task is, uh, that so say uh, your habit is this particular, but make that habit as a bracket of a overarching thing. For the say you have to go for morning run, that's your habit. You have to make that a habit, but not just that. But for bracketing the task means. The whole scenario that will get you into the uh, uh, that what you have it for example over here is going for a run in the morning. So you have to make the whole activity going uh, getting up from the bed, making yourself some coffee, getting fresh and out, putting on your shoes, and going for a run. All that activity itself you should make it itself. So it will be easier to, uh, for your brain to function up. So your all your neuro neurons will be activated in one. So these are three tools for making a habit. Breaking habits is exactly the mirror image of what the above points I have just mentioned. And if there is a one tool particular that you can name out is positive power. It's just a suggestion that I observed and I read somewhere. If you are breaking a habit, it means the bad habit that you already have is like a particular circuit of neurons in your brain that activates itself. It's like a, it becomes a reflex, like one for your phone when you are free. Reaching out to your, uh, reaching out to a pen and tapping or drawing something. Those are some bad habits. How to break that neuron neuron circuit? For that, do one thing. Whenever you perform an activity or you are doing one habit that you do not like, make a follow-up habit. Like if you are studying, and your bad habit is whenever you are idle, you go for your phone, start scrolling unnecessary. You don't know what happened, but you are going scrolling through apps. So do one thing. When you reach for your phone. Okay, now at the very moment you reach for your phone, you post it. Again, I am going for my phone. A follow up memory should be like, okay, whenever I pick my phone, I will go and drink a glass of water. So make one follow up, uh, follow up habit. So whenever you have a follow up habit, sooner or later, those certain neuron circuits that you have will get mixed up with the other habit. 
So not only are reflex for not going to the phone will activate, also they are reflexes for reaching uh, or entering a glass of water without sexual. In and in near, near future, by some time, you will realize that the uh, whenever you have that reflex of going to the phone, you will realize that you need to glass of water. So that will figure uh, that habit to be a little bit important. And I took a bit of time, I know, but thank you. <laughs> that was brilliant, Toastmaster Akash. Now I request DTM Raja Manikam to present the speech objectives. <clears throat> Thank you, DM Modi. And uh, today, our next speaker. Today, my next speaker today, Harish Nagarajan, is doing his uh, team collaboration pathway level one, project three, vocal variety and body language. Timer, please note, speech length should be uh, five to seven minutes. Speech title, fly with the magic bird. Fly with the magic bird, Harish Nagarajan. Purpose of this uh, statement, the purpose of this project for, is for the member to practice vocal variety and body language to enhance a speech. All the best, Toastmaster Harish Nagarajan. Back to you, Tipuri. Thank you. The speaker, Girish uh, Nadrajan, uh, Harish Nadrajan, I have requested him to sit and speak because the light was not falling well on his face when he was standing up. So please look at his voice modulation. Today, he may be excused for the body language because the face it was very dark when the light was not falling on the face when he stood up. Thank you so much. Over to you, Harish. Over to Sriparna. Thank you. Thank you, Girija, and thank you, DTM Rajamanikam. So the next speech is of Toastmaster Harish Natrajan, Fly with the Magic Bird. Fly with the man Magic Bird, Toastmaster Harish Natrajan. Dear Toastmasters and guests, close your eyes. Visualize yourself sitting on a huge, beautiful golden bird. The bird flares its wings open and flies off. You are flying over deserted ruins. Oh, it has turned to a busy, crowded city. You see villages dumped in darkness after sunset. Oh, wow, now they are twinkling with lights. There are beautiful emerald ocean turned to gray water with floating oil. You see snow-capped mountains, so sad, they are dwindled to rocks now. There are women trudging miles for water, now opening tap with baby smiles. Dear Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and gently open your eyes now. This magic bird that you are actually traveling on is your own mind. This would take you back and forth in time in fleeting seconds and explain the revolution that technology has brought to us. 20 years back, I would wake up to MS Subalashmi's Suprabhadu wafting in the breeze. Transported back to my serene school days, I still remember my grandmother who used to listen to her favorite devotional music on a tape recorder with eyes blissfully closed and a smile on her lips with head bobbing left and right. She would look a picture of contentment. She would say, what a magic on this thin film of a cassette is stored such divine voices. Fast forward to 15 years. Now, everyone with their smart, cute little smartphone can swipe and open apps like Spotify, Ghana, Amazon Music, and stream music from different geographical location, locations and cultures seamlessly. In 2005, with much joy and jubilation, the first mobile phone came to our house. We didn't even know how the mobile works. I was the curious kid, dabbing with technology and tinkering with devices. 
I grabbed the mobile phone, started clicking all the buttons in it, navigating all the menus, and finally understood how the mobile phone works. At the age of seven, I was a tutor for the whole neighborhood on how a mobile phone works. Now, seven-year-old kids are making apps for mobile. I remember how our home television set changed our weekends and get together with friends and families watching movies together. There were only a few more television set in the entire building. The TV remote was the most coveted object that made you feel like an emperor who fulfilled his wishes such as changing channel or increasing the volume. Now, anyone can view anything at their own cozy corner with just an earphone on, thanks to devices such as iPad, tablet, and mobile phones, and technology that um, like OTD platforms like Amazon and many others. I still remember my grandmother in her village, which the heat and smoke from the kitchen, tired and sleeping in the kitchen floor. And now, more modernized, customized, health conscious kitchens are available, which give her time to listen to bhajan after her lunch. I remember once our TV remote stopped working. My dad was con constantly hitting it at the back and occasionally it would work. Mom commented, our luck, nothing we buy works well. Dad added to it saying that even the remote works only when it's hit on the back. So I was very curious why it was happening. So I started getting the remote, dismantling it, I looked at all the components which it has. There were a circuit board, a keypad, and a battery board. I solidified my knowledge on how the battery, like how the remote works, and I figured out the logic of the loose contact. Moving on, my mom used to say that during the 1960s, People used to travel miles to Chennai to get a cataract surgery done. They would constantly be like stay there for days in darkness, and then finally they could remove the mask from their eyes so that they can see. Now, even remote villages have cataract surgery, and thanks to technology like laser treatment, people can get vision the very next day. So. Innovations such as artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning, and Internet of Things have revolutionized the way we work and business works. People no longer need to reach out to place physically. They can work remotely. There are flexible schedules available. Remote work has become a normal. That's the reason why we are like we can communicate and come together in this hybrid meet from different geographical locations. Now everyone can look at any any mechanism in a scientific spirit of inquiry, whether it be human body, whether or anything else. What could be done to mend it? No talk of luck or fate. This is the biggest mind shift that technology has brought to us. Conclusion, technology is a magic word. Ride it responsibly and enjoy the beauty that it brings to us. Over to you, Ghost Thank you, Toastmasters. Harish. That was quite a trip with technology. Before moving on, I would like to request the online speakers and evaluators to please ensure that they keep an eye out for the timer. Uh, you can pin the video to the screen if uh, it is more convenient, but please make sure that the timers uh, timer is visible. Moving on, 
The next speaker is Toastmaster Fatima Safa, presenting Project 3 of Level 2 from Effective Coaching Path. Toastmaster Romi, can you share one quality that all citizens of a nation must develop to stand united against threats to national security? Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. I believe... Uh... I believe for me, one factor of humility is dedication. Dedication is the most important things that you should have because it is really come from the heart and if there is no dedication, everything will be left behind. Thank you, Toastmaster Romi. I request you to present the speech objectives. Thank you. Once again, good evening, my fellow Toastmasters. My target speaker, Toastmaster Fatima Sapa. She chose them, she chose the pathways of effective coaching and level two project. At, at this night, she will try to deliver the solidarity of introduction. To, to a Toastmaster. The, 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 the objective of her speech is for the member to clearly, clearly define how Toastmaster and vision mentoring, and at the same time, to share some aspect of a previous experience as a prodigy. Timer, the time allocation will be five to seven minutes. All the best to you, Toastmaster. So the next speaker is Toastmaster Fatima. Life is a lesson. Life is a lesson, Toastmaster Fatima Safa. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies, for the wonderful introduction. Life is a lesson. Learn a bit of it every day. Quickly, let me ask you all a question. Raise your hands if you have come to Toastmasters and you have joined Toastmaster. Become a better leader. Someone who wants to progress in leadership? Yes, I see many raising in the physical platform. Now, raise your hands if you're from here. If you're joined Toastmasters, become a better speaker. You know, you see someone on the stage and you're like, I want to be like that. Yes, Toastmaster Gedicha, Toastmaster Sri Parana, many others. Now, finally, raise your hands if you have come to Toastmasters to socialize, make friends, meet new people. No one? Yes, there's someone on the physical platform. So, what we have established here so far is we have three types of people here. We have the people who want to become really great leaders, the other group who wants to be really good speakers, and then we have the final group who just wants to socialize, probably eat the snacks that, that are there. So, is it fair to say that if I was to combine a leader from one side of the group and buddy you up with someone on the other side and that you two together, those two members, could strategize and come up with a better plan on how they want to become better leaders? Yes, is that fair to say? The same would go for those two people who wants to become better speakers. If I was to take a new guest who have come and buddy you up with another person who wants to be a better speaker, then those two together, you could grow faster and better. And that's what we are here to talk about, mentoring. And there you go, my lesson number one about the whole concept and essence of mentoring. Hello to masters and guests. I have three objectives that I could potentially share with you. Why mentoring is important, number one. Second, my personal journey on how mentoring has affected me. And third, of all the life lessons that I have been gone through. First of all, why mentoring in Toastmasters? Mentoring in Toastmasters is important. Because someone here 
has been on that journey before you joined, right? They have done the graph, they have done the hard work. So they can look back and support you with some of the things that you need help with. That's why Postmaster's mentoring is important. So if I look at someone on the stage, if you look at someone on the stage and they look really confident, and you're like, wow, that's really good magic, but I could never do that. Well, what you could do is reach out to that person and they could convert that magic into science. And you wouldn't know that until you ask that person. For example, did you know that one way of public speaking is to think that you are more intelligent than the people who you are delivering your speech to? Did you know that? Why didn't you know? You didn't know because you never have asked the person who has been there. So that is the essence of mentoring, asking, reaching out to the person who has been there. Let me give you my personal story. When I joined this club, it was in the summer of 2021, the COVID was still a thing. And I really joined in without any end goal in mind. I didn't know what those masters could do. Funny story. My mom had informed me about a thing called speechcraft. That some of my friends were here too. So when I joined in, I was quite disappointed because the speechcraft thing that I was really eagerly waiting for had already passed. It was more or less the club meetings going on. Now, well, nevertheless, a really positive environment drew, in, drew me in and I joined as a member. It was also around this time that I was a protege meaning someone new to Toastmasters, a mentee, needed a mentor. Now I wondered as if I, why I wasn't formally assigned a mentor and I kept wondering. I thought of, uh, you know, asking my friends. But little did I know that the amount of support I was going to receive from all of the informal mentors in my journey here. They say that every boat needs a captain and that every captain needs a lighthouse to guide them. In this sense, there have been numerous people who have served as lighthouses for me, showing me the way. Whether it's the support and assurance that I needed, I had my friend Postmaster Rusby be there with me at the right time. Another instance, about a few months ago, when I had to go and carry out the hottest briefing, standing there, I was quite intimidated by the you know, people there. There were area directors, many distinguished leaders, and I wasn't the usual confident self. And at this point, a message pops in my on my phone. And when I check it, it's voila, the words that I really was looking forward to. And it read, you are there, you can do it. It was none other than my mentor, DJ Raja. It's only this, whether, it's not only this, whether it be encouraging, motivating, take on next levels, the long-term path that I needed to go. I know I have a support and a guide. Thank you for being the lighthouse for me. Thank you for building the confidence, if at all, that I have in me now. That's lesson number two. You need not need, need to make everything official. Some, some things are unofficial. There are also many other mentors in my life too. Let me again ask you a question. How many of you have been a child? How many of you have been six years old? No one? Yes, everyone watching Pogo, Cartoon Network, eagerly waiting for your favorite cartoon, right? So let me take you to a time long back, right during my childhood. As a childhood, I, uh, as a child, I was a really responsible girl. But if there is one drawback that everyone used to say is that I was too soft for criticism. In any case, there was a scolding directed to me. I quickly take it as a personal attack, bottle it up, and you know, without bend it out. And if at all there was anything that my teachers used to advise, it would always be to not take things personally. And at that point of time, I knew I got my lesson. The world is a different place. Lastly, as they say, all buildings need a foundation. My parents were my foundation, my pillar guiding me through. Now, I, at the end of this project, I can say that I confidently can tell the difference between a coach and a mentor. A mentor is someone who is there to guide you, 
who has a personal involvement in your life, who is really there for you when you need them. And that's the lesson that I really wanted to learn. In fact, I learned there is nothing stopping you from learning. All you need to do is reach out. Life is a lesson. Thank you and over to you, Tips Master of the Day. That was fantastic, Fatima. Now I invite timer Manasvi Tomar to announce the time taken for the prepared speeches. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day. Uh, so the time for uh, speaker Anand Soni is 5 minutes 45 seconds, so he qualifies for the evaluation. Time for uh, Toastmaster Akash Kokar is 9 minutes 20 seconds. Our speech was very good, but unfortunately, you had a lot of time taken. So I, I think it will be disqualification. Uh, time for speaker Harif Natarajan is 7 minutes. It's qualified. Time for speaker Fatima Safa is 7 minutes 50 seconds. So it is again over the even over the grace period of the time. Thank you. Thank you, Manasvi Tomar. Can we launch the polls for the best prepared speech? So do we uh, remove Anand Soni and uh, Fatima Safa? Right. Okay. I will remove, uh, I will have to remove Anand Soni and Fatima Safa. You have got Akash Koker and uh, this. Uh, excuse me, uh, Toastmaster. Yes. Go for Anand Soni. His time was 5 minutes 45 seconds. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, Harish Natarajan. His time was 7 minutes. Okay. So, whom should we remove? Uh, Fatima Safa and Akash Koker. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Just a minute. Thank you. Anand Soni and Harish Natarajan, please vote. Everybody, please vote online. Okay. Oh, got all the votes. So I'll close it. I'm ending the poll here. Offline, I will expect the votes to come. In the meantime, I will just go back. Yes. So we can move on. Toastmaster of the day, we can move on. I will like the, yes, we can move to the next section. Yes. Thank you, Gerija. And thank you all for voting. While I hand over the podium to offline Toastmaster, Regina Ismail, I wish to ask her, can you think of one corporate leader who with his inspiring speeches motivated teams to stay on top of their game in times of stiff competition? Thank you, Jamie, for this question. Yes, when you ask this question, I remember the famous quote said by Helen Keller. Mm -hmm. Hello, we can do a little, and together we can do so much. So, of course, uh, unity it is it has an immense role in our life. And uh, uh, recently, uh, when you have this question, uh, my, uh, one incident which just came into the mind, that is Turkey earthquake. As we know that, I thought that in our Bahrain, uh, uh, Bahrain people, most of the 60% of the people who contribute the Turkey, uh, Turkey people for the awareness. And uh, this, they told, uh, this, uh, they informed the Bahrain government, we stopped receiving the uh, uh, help from the other countries. So, so when I heard this, uh, I'm the member of the KNCC Bahrain. So I got a news from this uh, uh, question, from this, uh, this news. So I'm so glad to hear this because it shows the unity of all the countries for the awareness of others. So 
Okay, thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Regina. That was so, those words were really strong. And now, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sri Parna. Kudos to your excellent co hosting. <laughs> In our families, we used to do this. We have to stay together, we have to eat together, we have to pray together, and so on. So I'm just asking you, what is your opinion in the case of families? Do you think this 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 kind of uh, activities impact our unity of the family. And when people in a family live in different locations, what are the good habits for building effective unity? Thank you, Regina. I think uh, this is a very pertinent question because I have been staying away from my family for the last eight or so years. So I do miss like sitting together with them and being able to eat together. And I'm visiting my family in the month of March. That is one thing I'm definitely looking forward to sitting at the dining table, exchanging stories and eating together. So definitely, definitely that incul inculcates a lot of strong values and solidarity. And um, for people, I guess, who are uh, uh, who are trying to maintain a long distance relationship, uh, like I'm staying away from my family. So I guess the uh, main thing that we can do to keep in touch and maintain solidarity is to uh, uh, make calls every day to your parents, share your stories, and more importantly, hear each other out. Yeah. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Tosma, for this touching answer. Once again, good evening to everyone. Today, we are, today, our day, our theme of the day is unity is strength. Unity is the synonyms of solidarity, togetherness, or oneness. As we know that from our, our own experiences or from our daily life, we could learn that solidarity or Unity or oneness, it has immense harm. So we know that we can't, uh, we can't do a lot of difficult tasks easier, but being united, we can do all these tasks easier. So I have mentioned one card, one famous card said by Helen Keller earlier, Helen Keller earlier that is a lot we can do little, but together we can do so much. So after that, and from our in our nature, it shows the importance of unity. A high wall, honey, a high wall. <laughs> Honey bees consist up to 60,000 bees. Each bee has a specific job that contributes to the success of entire hive. And dolphins communicate with one another and protect themselves in hive. Struggle situation. Unity, unity is indeed strength. Now, after this small peek into the theme, we go to the next session, table topic session. The session is work guests and talk partners are not participated. I request President of Elaskin Delights, Toastmaster Slash, Toastmaster Girish Mitra to conduct our interesting table topic session. Over to you. Thank you, Girish Mitra. Over to you, Toastmaster. Uh, offline Toastmaster of the day, Regina. 
coming to my favorite part of uh, of any toastmasters meeting which is uh, the table topics table topics as we all know are the impromptu speeches which are given on on any any topic uh, under the sun like any topic under the sun i were i am reminded of a often quoted uh, table topic which is uh, meeting habits of orangutan this was something which i was asked to speak on once uh, coming coming back to the theme of the day i have designed the the table topics uh, which are uh, closer to the theme of the day before that i request uh, the timer to share the timing guidelines for the table topics and as we are running behind schedule i will uh, try to curtail the this session so that we catch up with the timing I think right in the beginning, the timer has uh, already described the timing. Yes, one minute, one point, one minute and a half and two minutes. Yes. I think we have yes, already... For one minute, we will show the green card. For one minute, 30 seconds, it will be a yellow card. Sorry. Yellow okay. card. And for Great. two minutes, it will be a red card. Thank you. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. So... Uh, what I've done is I've prepared uh, six topics and I will request uh, uh, volunteers uh, for, for the table topics, for the first table topics and the volunteer has to, the, the speaker has to give uh, the number and I will, uh, I will share the topic. Uh, I, I see Girja is the first volunteer. I will not, uh, the offline volunteers, I'm not able to see clearly. So somebody will have to point out if there are any offline volunteers so let, let's start with uh, girja so can you uh, say any number from 1 to 6 3 topic number 3 topic number 3 okay a very interesting topic uh, the topic is even the weak become strong when they are united girja yes thank you so much when the weakness very often is in the way we conceive that we are weak. Very often we presume that we don't have the strength within us and we are not able to do things. But when family members are with us, when friends are with us and they tell you what are your strengths and why you can face a situation, then you suddenly begin to feel that there is a surge of strength that is coming from nowhere, from anywhere that you have not ever even imagined. So we have seen that people... And similarly, when people get united, you we have seen Mahatma Gandhiji when he came from South Africa and when he started, he rarely knew anybody in India. And when he started the movement, yes. But then he did not feel the strength that he felt strength in his conviction. He had the courage of his conviction, but he was not sure whether people will join. But when he started announcing one by one, he saw that people liked the way he wrote in Gujarati and then people were coming for him. And then that gave him the strength that, yes, people are there to support me. So what started with just 80 people ended with one and a half lakhs people when he when they reached the end of the Satyagraha at the Dandi March, right? So it is always the people who give strength. When people are united, you feel strong. Just having the numbers also make you feel that when you hear the claps more, when you, people hear cheer for you more, that is why we say that, come along, when I'm going to speak, I want my friends to come along because they're there to cheer for me. Yes, people do give strength. Yes, numbers give you strength because they also know your strengths and they tell you what you're capable of very often. It can be family, it can be friends. Sometimes we don't know our own strengths and others tell us, like Hanuman was told by Pavan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Girja. I, I would now request uh, uh, the offline Toastmasters to have... Do we have any uh, offline volunteer for the table topics? No, no, Toastmaster. <laughs> Toastmaster Anand Soni. Toastmaster Anand Soni. Okay. Let him come forward. So, can, can you come forward, Toastmaster Anand Soni? Yes. Please stand. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, Toastmaster Anand. Uh, can you pick a number from one to six, except number three, which is already taken? Number one. Number. As my name is coming, there will be eight. So always stand with number one. <laughs> okay. Great. 
So the topic for you is the strength lies in differences, not in similarities. Strength lies in sir. differences, not in similarities. Similarities. Yeah, this is very important thing in our life also when we say that uh, strength, unity, solidity. Generally, we think that it's a similar kind of bunch of uh, things I put. It will not bring your attention. You saw the flower pot. If you put a similar color flower, it will not give you so much uh, feeling of uh, some happiness. But just imagine that different flower you are putting in the flower pot, how it will attract you. It's a similar thing, just to imagine one more point. So if I wear the same color of this blazer, same shirt, same tie, same trousers, same I will look like as a cartoon, right? Another thing, you look at India. We are united, but we have similarity in the thoughts, not in the language, not in the festivals what we celebrate. We have so many things which are different, but still we are united. That's why India is the center of attractions for the whole world. Even in our body also, different organs are there. Can you see that eyes is same like my ear? My tongue is similar to my finger? No. All organs are different, but there is a solidity. There is a unitedness. And the good unitedness show your strength, and it will also show that how impressive you are, like my country. Thank you very much. For giving me the opportunity. Thanks, Dr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster. Um, I see a guest here, Dr. Garima. Uh, Dr. Garima, would you like to volunteer to speak? Hi. Uh, okay, I'll go, but uh, is it okay if I don't switch on my video? Okay, no worries. <laughs> Thank if you. you can, uh, uh, if you can choose a number between uh, uh, two number number two and four five six. Any of the number? Okay, five. Number five. Okay, number five. The topic for you is the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. The strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. So. Uh... Strength lies in uh, in teamwork, and teamwork comes from uh, not only leading but also being behind, leading from behind and leading from front. So what I believe is that the, when we work together, it doesn't matter you may be the strongest or weakest in the team. So you have to ensure that the whole team is balancing out by making sure that the strongest and the weakest member are able to deliver what we need to work together and work on a common goal. So as I see it, when we, when we come from various backgrounds, you know, there will be some people uh, who will be able to have different strengths and we should be complementing each other in our strengths and weaknesses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we'll uh, close this session uh, in interest of time. Yes. Okay. Bye. Back to you, the Toastmaster of the day. Timing check for the speakers, please. Yeah. Uh, all the Toastmasters for the table topic are qualifying. Uh, Toastmaster Girija took 1 minute 42 seconds. We are not able Anand to hear. Took 1 minute 45 seconds and Dr. Zarima took 1 minute. So can we have, uh, I, I think all, all of 
uh, all the speakers have qualified. Uh, so can I request uh, Girja to launch the polls? Yes. Please table topics, Poll is launched. First speaker Girija, second speech speaker Anand, and third speaker Garima. Yes. Only two people out of eight have voted. Please, I request the others to vote. Only 25% participation. I request others to vote. The poll is seen. Yeah. I think I think we might Yeah, the idea. poll disappeared. I think that's what all I was also trying to Okay. I'm relaunching the poll. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, please. Yes. Yeah. Now we got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm ending the poll. We got the this thing. Yes. Okay. Now I uh, I hand it over back to uh, the offline Toastmaster of the day for further proceedings. Regina, please continue. Thank you, Toastmaster Dinesh Mitra, for the interesting table topic session. Now we are going. Now I call upon our general evaluator, Toastmaster Doctor Brilliant, for the evaluation session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Regina. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Once again. Welcome to the most interesting section of the Toastmasters meeting, which is all about feedback. It helps us become better from what we already are. Feedback helps not just us when we deliver, but when we hear about it from other speeches and role players. We are slightly behind schedule, so I'll keep it brief and rush through the session without compromising on the quality of this section. We start with evaluations. Remember, the duty of the evaluator is to evaluate the speech, not the speaker, as this provides an opportunity for everyone in the meeting to learn from what has happened. We have had four speeches and we had one evaluator who evaluated two speeches. In the interest of saving the transition of 30 seconds, I would request distinguished Toastmaster Raja to evaluate the speech delivered by Anand Soni first. Your timing will remain as two to three minutes and then continue for Harish. Over to you, distinguished Toastmaster Raja Manik. Thank you, General Evaluator, Dr. Williams. Yes, particular uh, my speaker today is delivered an uh, uh, icebreaker. So we would like to give a standing ovation for his naked speech. Thank you so much. Yes, Ray, our Anand Sony, yes, be uh, self motivated. Are you? Yes. It's not an icebreaker speech. Of course, in our in our Toastmaster journey, we have to deliver our icebreaker speech because you are clarity and clearly introduced yourself to our club members as an educator. How you came to educator? You have done every every research in your life as a teacher life. Your journey, how you started from Punjab. Really, we feel our journey how we started. Like this, you are went awesome journey explained to our members. In particular, I would like to share 
the, your journey is from air force to your educator journey is well then narrated from your journey and of course we have to tell our how one window is open yes of course another window is open right we have to try 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 until we are succeed your journey inspired lot of us thank you so much for on sony working is industry to the teaching purpose yes of course why i i like to uh, i like to go to teaching level because no we are the industry less of course your life started from industry to teaching level then you have know the practical experience so we uh, students get the clear knowledge on technology so of course you end up in ministry of education bahrain welcome to bahrain of course finally we have to evaluate for our first master this journey you well and clarity explain to our role and vocal variety eye contact gesture audience awareness comfortable interest everything is not like a ice breaker speech is like a uh, of course you can say the level 3 and level 4 speech wonderful it's a recommendation from my side as a evaluator so we have if you have to take one big story in your life to make us to explain the motivation it would have better to go next speech level of course we have understood finally we end up with your balavar patel team connected end of speech that shows you are improper speaker shows very well so of course we are self motivated and back to you general evaluator thank you raja could you continue with the third speaker's evaluation harish's evaluation thank you general evaluator how my next speaker arish natarajan wow i could say you are a tech savvy yes i am also tech savvy thank you so much for your journey i could like to you evaluate in your five letter word that is toast your speech that means i could start with the t you start your title and the tech savvy is correlated with your fly with a magic bird yes of course we started okay arish natarajan showed like flying you are Uh, with the magic bird so something related but you are how you related with the technology is very well fantastic next second letter is go objective objective of the speech is finally you are appreciating the technology how you are correlated your personal story to technology how technology is helping in our olden age to new age so re really narrated very much of course third letter is art Art of technology, yes, of course, we, you did very well in this part. Fourth letter is yes, summary and story. Really, really, you are covered. How many stories here? Too much. We really uh, enjoyed that. Emma Subbulakshmi, new music, connected, latest technology, and seven year old. How they are adopting this mobile technology, and how we memories back. How we change the remote in TV. and how you are uh, feeling with grandma village and how the modern technology health conscious is improved you are show the gratitude to technology towards technology of course finally is volume hit back yes of course i used to tell, fight with my siblings with the uh, volumes oh my god miles to correct survey yes of course more technology improved artificial intelligence you covered every things remote work hybrid of course all the things you have covered with technology and uh, of course your gratitude shows your technology finally i would like to have the recommendations you are the technology technology say, usage and savvy so you would have improve your uh, background this for example if, if you are in public speaking skill and the virtual stage you have to use or uh, don't use the ba virtual background and uh, of course i understood that some issues are technical so but you have to adopt your technology and make sure your Uh, your speaking speaking area and you have to show vocal variety gestures everything you would have add some more value your, your speech is definitely went very well of course and uh, you are covered with uh, time also you are very much used fully time taken by 7 minutes really awesome and then 
these are the recommendation you would have used next time your speeches will be grateful and back to you general evaluator thank you thank you so much uh, distinguished host master raja i would now like to invite the speech evaluator for akash kokar speech host master vikram koshi to evaluate his speech yeah good evening everyone once again a special good evening to my target speaker host master akash kokar making and breaking habits what a title host master akash you connected to me personally by just announcing your speech title making and breaking habits we are in a world of today today's world it's very hard to make new habits and breaking the old habits i really find difficult myself to start a new habit like getting up early go for a walk or breaking a habit of just uh, scrolling on the social media for hours what i like most in your speech was you started with lot of technical details about habit which were you define the word habit then the technical aspects of habit or how to quantify habit or uh, the memory you discussed the two type of memory you talked about the dopamine levels and you also discussed of how to create a habit and uh, vice versa how to break a habit nice usage of gestures a good voice you a good usage of english and you started your speech with a question also you asked you connected the audience by giving a question that was very good now i would like to concentrate more on the areas of improvement for you which i feel will really take your speech to the next level one was your video setting i could not see you like straight away i saw you like you know turned around which i understand that this was your uh, physical like physical meeting and the video setting has to be adjusted for that it was not only for you but for all the speakers second thing a suggestion you had too much technical details i would advise you to go uh, give your more when you have more technical details have a powerpoint presentation with you because i could not digest or remember all those technical details the new terms which i heard today from you third advice would be the pace of your speech at times i felt that the speech was too fast i could not take it like uh, you was too fast in your speech so just slow down let your words sink into the audiences uh, mind so that they are with you they are more well connected with you in an all a very good speech a good introduction you had a body i would add if you had concluded it with a bang the way you started good voice good hand gestures vocal variety eye contact and a good speech and a good topic at all over to you uh, general lecturer dtm brilliant Dr. thank you Bilen. thank you thank you vikram thanks for the evaluation i would now like to invite the last evaluator toast master romi to evaluate the speech presented by fatima please welcome toast master romi by speaker and your sunni i would like to ask this where the boss master leaders are great fellow boss masters and guests good evening i love the audacity of clarity of the voice of my target speaker boss master patina sapa the clear voices are very uh, very interesting First, he asked the question, being about a leader, and are you want to become a leader? The second one that her strength is choosing a good context. You know, if you watch the movie An Ant Man, the ant, in order for you to understand what is the purpose of the ant and what is they want to do, you should need to become an ant. Those master Fatima Sapa, he. He, she chooses a good topic for for a post master. It's very interesting, very comfortable because we are all and 
Aside from the guests, a toast master, we can relate on that. Number three. Number three is differentiating about the mentor and the protege. And she targeted already the objective of her speech. But in every speech, there are need things for improvement. Number one, Toastmaster Fatima, I believe one thing that you need to improve is the body movement. Well, on online, we can, we can maximize that we can speak, we can use our eyes, but let us, let us, you know, let us start to uh, maximize our body movement. You can use the hands, the gesture, that is good. And number two, that uh, Toastmaster Fatima is a time management. Toastmaster saying, practice, practice, practice. That you, that you will make perfect. But it doesn't mean time management is practice in order your speech to be in the time itself, the maximum. And our objective is that way. Overall, in conclusion, Toastmasters, Sapa, you have the clarity of your voice, the context, the choices of your story, and how you differentiate this. One thing that I need to adjust a little, time management and also body movement. Doing this, I believe I can, uh, looking forward for you for next year. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmasters. May I invite Toastmaster? Manasri to present the timer's report for all the evaluators. Thank you, General Evaluator Dr. Billy. Uh, all of the evaluators are qualifying. Toastmaster Raja took for uh, Anand Soni, he took 2 minutes 49 seconds. For uh, T and Hari, Toastmaster Raja took 2 minutes 52 seconds. Toastmaster Vikram for uh, T and Akash, he took 2 minutes 50 seconds. Toastmaster Romi for TM Fatima, he took two minutes, 52 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Mansri. And we now would like to invite the grammarian to present her report on the grammar usage all through the meeting. Toastmaster Girija. You. You're on mute. We yes. Can't hear you. Yeah. Word of the day was used by several uh, speakers. Uh, DTM uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Renosh, uh, Toastmaster of the Day Sri Parna, Anand Soni used it several times. Akash Kokar, uh, brilliant. Uh, to, several people use the word of the day. Thank you so much for it. The good usages were several again. Tough times fostered national solidarity, worked with the difference, solidarity of emotion and thought, the precise usages, but not technical jargon, which I really appreciate our content dependency, episodic memory, procedural memory, time your pace. Uh, then uh, these were really nice. Inculcate values and solidarity. Again, then the imagery that came about in the speech, like flare it wings open, deserted ruins, dunked in darkness, snow-capped mountains, baby smiles, fleeting seconds, wafting in the breeze, head bobbing left and right. Then the power of three used by customized, modernized, health-conscious cooking. The metaphor that is uh, mountains dwindle, dwindling to rocks, emerald oceans, uh, scientific spirit of inquiry. That was they, These were very good expressions that were used. Areas of improvement covered everything's I think it was a, probably a slip of the tongue. It should be covered everything. Then a lot of technical details. Uh, we Uncountable nouns only we'll use a lot of, like a lot of water. But otherwise we'll use many technical details or several technical details. And the, the pronunciation variation, the correction would be protege. It is not protege or pro, protege as a, uh, several people pronounce. It is protege. Over to you, uh, general evaluator, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Girija. Now comes the most critical role at the meeting where this person makes a note of how much of crutch words have we used. May I invite the R counter 
Toastmaster Renosh to present his report for the meeting. Thank you, General Valvitus. Greetings, one and all. I think today was one of the tough days for me as an accounter because I was trying as much as possible to hear, but I didn't. So I think I've seen an evolution in all the speakers over here. Well done. But a few things which I would like to point out. One of the words which were quite often used quite a lot, lot of time, double words of was so and the word now. So, so and now were the two things that was quite you often used by many of the speakers. Apart from that, we have Toastmaster Akash Kokar who used the word um once, a uh, twice. We had Girish Mittal who had used quite a few number of times the word a uh, and a. Uh. Toastmaster Vikram Joshi had used a uh, uh, twice and Toastmaster Romi had used the word a uh, once and the quite commonly repeated word was let us, let us. Toastmaster Harish Natarajan had used the word now and like as repeated words. And Toastmaster An Soni had used the word again as his repeat words. Over to you, Tenli Valuta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Renoj, for this fantastic and to the point presentation. Now is my time to share the overall feedback about this meeting. And as it is said, the best place to start is at the beginning. Very happy to share that the meeting started bang on time. That's one of the best things that can ever happen at a Toastmasters meeting. And kudos to all of us for making that possible. Despite the fact that there were several changes in role players, multiple people stepping in to play multiple roles, hats off to everyone. Presiding officer called the meeting to order, spoke about uh, briefly about the journey, invited guests. Well done. Some of the shining moments of the meeting, and I'll take role wise uh, sections. Those masters of the day, we had two people, Sri Parna and Regina. Both of them did great in championing their respective sections. Growth opportunities, I would say. It is recommended when you have an online and an offline Toastmaster of the day to plan the sequence effectively so that transitions are effectively managed and there is no ugly pause, as we call it, at Toastmasters. The second suggestion which I have, especially for speakers who are in person, is to either use paper or use digital devices. Having both can actually create a confusion where do you look for the content and at times that also results in time delays. Table topics, Master Girish, uh, excellent uh, job done in terms of the topic selection, managed to curtail the time to support overall time management. And as I look at the watch, we are almost closer to the timeline that we had initially planned for. That is a great hallmark of all of us collectively aiming to help the purpose. Growth opportunity, I would suggest the table topic master explains why we have those uh, table topic sessions and also gives an opportunity to explain what kind of skills can be polished so that newcomers who are not used to table topics will understand the essence. Well done. Evaluators, uh, excellent job done. All of them presented their uh, reports very well. I love the acronym used by Toastmaster Raja, T-O-A-S-T. Growth opportunity, it's a generic feedback. Instead of naming the speaker, my recommendation would be always to use the speaker. This helps isolate the speaker from the speech. And if there are any recommendations, the speaker may not feel offended. It's a very sensitive topic when it comes to recommendations. It can negatively impact and it is always advisable to isolate the speaker from the speech. Overall, a great job done. Uh, grammarian, shining moments, I would say, word of the day displayed on the background, exceptional work there. Uh, my suggestion is maybe the font could have been slightly bigger because once you go into the smaller icon part, it, it becomes invisible. Putting it in the chat was a great opportunity. Well done. Encourage participants to use the word of the day. And I was impressed by the fact that 
she took pains to explain why grammar is important. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Girija. Our counter, uh, Renosh, excellent job done, presented the role description well. Uh, my suggestion would be to use a statistical analysis instead of saying, for example, this is a sensitive topic. And while the R counter has the opportunity to name and shame people, it would be recommended to avoid all of that. Mention during the meeting, we had five hours, six homes. This gives a general feedback and one-on-one -on -one you may provide feedback to the respective speaker at the end of the meeting because no one would like to see their names there. But again, it's a recommendation, not a standard practice. You may think about it. There are certain areas where we can think of how we distinguish between a long, ugly pause and a conscious pause. Many of the speakers accidentally may have paused during the session, which translated as uh, you know normal pause for a speech. That is one area where I feel there could be some improvement. Timers, I think this is a very critical role, especially in a hybrid setting where uh, managing both the online as well as the in-person meeting participants become uh, very challenging. A job well done by both uh, Manasvi and Renosh. Hats off to you for making that coordination seamless. I was observing the change of green in the in-person room and the online room. One suggestion which I have in hybrid or in virtual is to keep the timer pinned all the times so that you don't need to ask the speaker to pin. It's always there on the screen at all times. Sajan at Arms, excellent job done. Started the meeting well, and I'm sure there is a lot to learn from the way uh, Renosh brought in the energy to the meeting. Spoke very well. And my suggestion is to follow what Renosh did, explain the rules about how it works in hybrid as well as in virtual. And I think that's something which is a key takeaway personally for me. Overall, I feel it was a well-structured meeting, started on time. There was an attempt by all participants and role players to effectively include everyone to speak. Key role players, my encouragement to all of you is to keep a tab on your time as you may need to modify the script based on what time has been consumed. At the end of each short section, you may check timer's script and see falling short, maybe curtail some of the work that you have already worked on. It's difficult, but it needs to be done. One suggestion, spotlight the speaker at all times when there is an evaluation. It gives a sense of the speaker and the evaluation. Maybe we should have a dedicated uh, person who's not taking an active role in the meeting who can act as a, a Zoom master. I know we have multiple people taking multiple roles. It becomes very difficult. So identify one person who could be that Zoom master for the session. And probably it could help future meetings to become better. As it is said, good, better, best, never let it rest till the good becomes better, better becomes best. This is my time to rest. Thanks to all of you. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day, Regina. Yeah, in person, Toastmaster of the Day. Brilliant for this wonderful and efficient evaluation session. So now, shall we launch calls for speech parameters now? Yes, please. Yes. Already online is launched. Uh, there, I think they have done. So we have got all the C, so I'm ending the poll, all the six votes. Okay. So can we move on to the next words? Next uh, polling for auxiliary role oh, players. I'm auxiliary role players. Yeah. So again, we have got DTM. Uh, timer and counters and grammarian. Yes, two timers, offline and online. And then we've got our counter and grammarian. Yeah. 
equal four primary role players. Yes. I'll end the poll. We got all only seven votes out of nine for auxiliary role players. Request two more people. My name Toastmasters of the day, table topic master, and general graduate. Okay. I'm going back. Launching the poll for the primary role players. We've got six votes out of nine. Request everybody to vote. While the results of the polls are shared and combined by offline and online, here is my wrap up message to you. Canada gives us, while migrating long distances, make beam formation and cut. The leader is the apex of the V. When the leader gets tired or sick, this the goose moves back and another goose will take its place. This ability to rotate leadership shows how important it is. Not only for leaders, but for a whole team to be flexible, share the work lot and watch out for each other. On this note, I invite presiding officer, Toastmaster Blessed Thomas, to provide vote of thanks and conclude, conclude with the award ceremony and group photograph. All the you, presiding officer. Thank you so much, Physical Tiamoni, Toastmaster yes. Gina. Uh, Toastmaster Gilch, I believe you're still working on the award certificate. Yes, and so just I will you... take a minute. Yeah, yeah, sure, no issues. Take your time. No hurry. I mean, we have like three minutes, so no <laughs> hurry, no tension. All right. Uh, okay, so while that's happening, I'll just do the word of thanks. First and foremost, let me thank our general evaluator, Dr. Brilliant SK, for accepting our invitation and coming down and blessing this meeting. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, next, I have to take a moment to thank all the VPE educations of all the five clubs. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, they have a separate group in which we presidents just don't do anything. We just sit there and just absolutely nothing. It's it's completely done by the VPE education. I mean, we have one message. They have like 20 messages already there. So that's the type of commitment that they have. Next, I have to thank all the members of all the five clubs for making this happen. You guys took up roles whenever we asked and you helped us out a lot also. And I'm going to say finally, I have to thank all the guests that we had also. I don't see them right now, but the guests who had come, thank you so much for coming. Now, these two people, I think I need to take special mention for them. One is DTM Renosh and the second one is DTM Raja. DTM Renosh is doing three roles today. I, I don't even know. I think he's he's just like, uh, he wants to set a personal record or something. I, I have no idea what's the idea here, but way to go with that. And DTM Raja, all the time, just you, you tell him anything and he'll immediately be like, yes, I don't know why he doesn't know the word no, but for some reason, he doesn't know the word no. And it always works also. That's how we trap you all the time. Thank you, DTM Raja. And uh, that is it i think that's all i have to thank and uh, again finally all of you i thank can you. share the certificates i'm ready yeah uh, okay. okay uh toastmaster Girija, then i think you can you can announce the winners i believe since you already have it ready okay so first i would like to thank our general evaluator for graciously graciously guiding us for agreeing to come over here thank you so much dr Blin. so here is your certificate for that thank you so much for you, certificate is nothing. I know that you are working at the international level. I, I don't have words to thank you enough. And speech evaluator Vikram Joshi from Timber Toastmasters for having grace the occasion and doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much for graciously guiding our speaker. The best uh, ice speaker, icebreaker, congratulations to the icebreaker. Celebrate and recognize the presentation of the icebreaker to Anand Soni. So congratulations. 
best table topic speaker, Dr. Garima Anandani, our guest. Wonderful. That was nice. Best speech evaluator, distinguished Toastmaster, Raja Manikam. Congratulations. Wonderful, as always. Best auxiliary role player, our counter, Renosh Thomas. Wonderful. I wouldn't say it is only for our counter, our counter, timer, sergeant at arms, everything he excels. Amazing. It, best primary role player, Toastmaster of the day, Sri Parna Basu. Really very happy because she is just one month old and she has really taken up the role very well and done it with a lot of confidence. So congratulations, Sri Parna. And over to you, the pres presiding officer, so that you can adjourn the meeting. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Gidja. Okay, I have a doubt. Do we uh, take a photo and then adjourn the meeting or do you want to be in time? Which one is it? Yeah, we'll adjourn the meeting and then we can have a... Okay, fine. So then I call this meeting to an end of all the five clubs. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you. And no, no, wait, don't go, please. Just like one, one minute. Just let's smile. Toastmaster Raja. Come on. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Raja will take the photo from there. I'll take the photo for the online participants here. Okay, you're a photographer. Also. Don't I'm worry, we, we both will do that. <laughs> <laughs> we coordinate and that's a special kind of a setting which distinct Toastmaster Raja will be doing over there. Uh, the Toastmaster Fatra. And I will do it from here. Done. Toastmaster Fatra, right. switch on your uh, video, if possible. Distinguished Toastmaster Raja, let us know once your 